Hey there, one up indie here coming with a fourth devlog for Super Demon Survivors. And today we want to have a quick game designer's perspective into Vampire Survivors, where we just analyze a few core um, uh, things of the game itself and to analyze and to adapt it to our game. So hopefully you can follow me once again on this small journey, why decisions and why things are being made the way they are. So to just to iterate, so we are paying quite a lot of homage to Vampire Survivors because they in the end are the most famous, currently most famous um, game that actually doesn't end. Of course there are different ones and I played them, they are pretty good too, but here this is the most famous one so we're gonna start on that because the recognition is the biggest one. And here we go into a thing which is not necessarily a flaw, but let's say you have different kind of characters, you can select them and on the left side you see there are stats, they are a little bit different, so for example one has a little bit more duration, the other one has a little bit more might and so on. And for example here this one is walking faster and this one is getting a passive which all the characters have they have kind of passives which are kind of hidden inside mechanics which you don't really see or too much feel and therefore uh, the character classes are mostly in my opinion of course you can I can be completely wrong with that um, like buckets where you have like content and, and like variables and these variables are a little bit more uh, taxing to this side or to that side so basically it makes sense if you want to have a little bit more um, damage overall to, to, pay, to pick for example this champ and for example if you want to do a little bit more of collecting so here permanent pickup radius then you maybe want to favor this one but besides that um, the gameplay feeling is extremely similar because none of the characters and hopefully I'm not completely wrong with that. None of the characters have a unique weapon to themselves. So here, for example, the star character with the whip or the chick with the uh, magic wand, whatever that is, these weapons you can always pick up in the game. Every character can have every weapon. Of course, there's some RNG. Maybe you don't find them because some are more rare, some are less rare. Here, um, this is then a different discussion. But, but in the end, it doesn't really significantly uh, matter if you just pick the dude with the whip, the chick here, or the other, hopefully that's the chick, um, and then basically you have different kind of weapons which you can use, because in the end uh, all those weapons are findable in the game anyway. So how can we do this and improve on this formula, but um, establish kind of a feeling which is bound to one? very very important so basically it should be one thing or this is for example our idea behind uh, the analysis of that hey the game designer is seeing this as an opportunity so this would be then from my side saying like hey we want to make the formula the base formula the same but iterate on hopefully a good standard practice in the future where you say like hey this is actually improving on the game so what would be the thing? So for example, if you pick the character which is the, the barbarian here, for example, one thing which um, Vampire Survivors doesn't do, it does not animation lock you. But animation locking can be a potentially beneficial and strategic gameplay because let's say our dude is swinging his axe and then this little hitbox, this is just for me so I see what I'm hitting, so this is just for debugging, don't, don't worry about that. And then uh, it means you need to go close at the beginning and this berserker slash which is just part of um, this character is locked to this character this is very important in a sense so here first of all we distinguish in that you kind of have to be a little bit strategically playing so for example every what was that one and a half seconds or two seconds or three seconds or whatever you do an auto attack which is locking you a little bit into motion of course you can still walk but very 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 slowly and of course one thing other which we uh, did for example if you are getting hit uh, maybe not <laughs> then you get a hit animation which is uh, played kind of fast maybe I have to do that slower so here once again distinguishing from the core gameplay but of course maybe you've seen uh, that and you're thinking okay um, is that so different in my opinion yes 
So for example, why do I say that? Let's say we pick a different character. Now this is an archer. Once again, we do some animation locking and now um, we don't have any splash damage. So for example, if we're hitting one dude, one arrow, one of the three is gone. So basically the gameplay is different. You need to kite a little bit more. For example, this uh, character is maybe faster and he is ranged, but maybe he has uh, less HP. So once again, now you maybe want to improve on the qualities of this character because you want to play him differently because in the end you have to play him differently. He feels different because his first initial unique moveset and his unique attack pattern which is very similar to the other one but of course now we are having ranged projectiles from the get-go then um, gameplay is a little bit different and then for example you need to maybe kite a little bit more because he has less damage overall so once again um, strategies now will be different and this is for example one thing which we wanted to definitely improve on the, on the game that we want to have um, well and give the player a feeling that the character actually is really, really, really different. Besides the, the sprite swap, we want it to appear that the strategy and how you play it is then, for example, a different one. And then, for example, some people say like, hey, I prefer more damage in melee. Or some people say like, hey, I prefer um, being faster overall and kiting and having ranged attacks, which do a little bit less damage. And as you can see, this um, champ once again has no splash damage this is of course then important so let's say you're having different uh, big waves so here i'm not getting through like i did before with the melee character so once again strategies are different so builds are different and then once again you can just um, make uh, just say like hey i want to improve on that champ or maybe the other champ is actually better for me and here you can make your own strategies how to play it and here once again this is a way how the game designer is just analyzing the other game and then um, just saying like hey how can we improve on the formula so let's see how many instances enemy stored yeah looking good so once again uh, 500 frames per second still okay so this is the thing which i did by the way uh, for the last two days also which um a link in the description below this is a culling system which you see in foranger i don't have the game so, so i cannot tell you uh, well show you gameplay of that but they um, have kind of a view and outside the view there are some mechanics which are well reducing and um, uh, uh, storing things into ds maps just basically what they this is basically just storing stuff which you don't necessarily need to see on the screen wow and i see and i guess i need to do the buffer around me a little bit bigger so here once again that was just implemented a few hours ago Alrighty, hopefully you got something out of that from the perspective of the game of the game designer which is just analyzing and seeing like hey there is an opportunity here Alrighty, that was it for the fourth devlog of Super Demon Survivors and see you the next time. Have a good one. One up indie.